when you tell somebody that you have schizophrenia, how do you want them to react? I want them to not be afraid of me and not to look at me any differently than they had looked at me before. How often do you hear voices? My, my uh, hallucinations are almost 24-7. Uh, it's something that I just have learned to live with. Like, I often say, I'm just someone who can't turn off my nightmares even when I'm awake. That's not a reason to be scared of me. Thank you for being so honest. No problem. Have you had these hallucinations while we've had this discussion right now? I don't answer that question. <laughs> I, I, I've, I've sort of made it as like a rule with myself not to really talk about whether or not I have am hallucinating at that moment because then the first response is, oh, where is that hallucination? And then a common reaction is then everyone in the room looks that direction. I don't know why, they're not gonna see anything, but that's just like the reaction. And that's very dangerous because then you have real life interacting with your hallucination and that could really hurt the psyche. Uh, my junior year of high school, I started hallucinating a clown. Uh, it actually very much resembles the older adaptation of Stephen King's It. Uh, so it wasn't it wasn't a good good time. That's when, frightening. Yeah, it is. Fr it is very was very very frightening. Um, I actually long. I mean, they thought that I've had schizophrenia all of my life. Like it started out as shadows and whispers, and it just sort of developed into what I have now. But at first. I thought I was possessed, and let me just tell you, that's a lot, a lot more scary than realizing you have a, a chemical imbalance inside your head. So that's why I promote education so much, because it, it's often said that you fear what you don't understand. So me understanding more about my diagnosis makes me less afraid. My first time I ever told anyone outside of my family was my high school boyfriend. I, at this time, I didn't know what schizophrenia was, and I mean, I don't blame him. We, neither of us knew what schizophrenia was, but I told him about the clown hallucinations, and he had never seen the movie It, so he ended up looking it up, and he actually thought it was more funny than scary, and so he kind of laughed it off, and I just, that, that really made it difficult to ever, like, I, I really did not open up until college then to anyone outside my family because I thought oh, if my boyfriend doesn't, you know, understand, then a random friend won't. I lost control of everything and that's what ended up resulting in the suicide attempt. Would it be okay if I asked you a few questions about that suicide attempt? Okay, I don't talk very much about it, but if I'm not comfortable, I'll let you know. Yeah, let me know right away. Okay. Why did you believe that was your only option? It's because I didn't feel like I could be the person who I wanted to be and that people wouldn't accept me as a person, that wouldn't accept my diagnosis. Really, it's the worry of, the real voices, like I, I hear voices in my head, but it's really the fear of what real people, like real voices have to say than the ones I hallucinate in my head. Like those are the ones that matter to me more. What do you fear others saying? I'm afraid that they, they will think of me as a freak. I, I have been called a freak, I've been called crazy, I've been called deranged, I've been called uh, very nasty words. What um, would you prefer to be called? Cecilia, <laughs> my name. I've, I've joked that if there's Academy Awards for just acting normal, uh, people who have schizophrenia would definitely, definitely be nominated. <laughs> so sometimes you're giving 100% of your energy and effort just to staying composed. That, that, is, that is correct, uh, yeah, uh, th that's why I also have to stay away from triggers. A uh, trigger that I have is actually a lot of red and white. I have these hallucinations such as the clown and I also hallucinate this girl like from, from like similar to like from the ring and she's the worst, like 
she she has a knife and she sometimes like stabs me uh, sometimes in the face. Are conversations like this therapeutic for you? Do you hope people are able to have these or would you rather just have them treat you as the person? I, I think both. I think conversations like these are important, but then also I don't want every time I interact with that person to just be sort of their their database of questions of about people who have schizophrenia. Like, if I'm someone's friend, I want to be their friend. I've had a friend that actually said, I can't talk to you anymore because I don't know what's going on in your head while I'm talking to you. But I mean, do we really know what's going on in anyone's head when we're talking to them? You have that fear of people thinking that you're crazy, but getting that help is so, so important and something that you, you really just can't, don't let, don't let anyone get in your way from that, uh, especially yourself. If you could change one thing in your life, what would it be? Hmm, that's a, that's a really good question. Um, I wish that I got treatment earlier for my schizophrenia. Because I look back at, especially when I had the suicide attempt, of just really the, the fear of the diagnosis and the fear of the stigma just paralyzing me. I wish that I didn't have that fear. If somebody wants to be your friend and connect with you, what's the best way to do that? Just be genuine. Uh, I guess just just be nice. Uh, I don't I don't I don't have a good answer answer to that. Uh, just. I don't know, play games with me when I feel, I love playing games. Uh, for example, when I feel down, my roommate plays uh, board games with me. Just being able to interact and have those type of moments where we aren't on like electronic advice. Like I don't have a phone. I, that's a pet peeve of mine is if people are like staring at their phones. So just having those genuine like game old old I sound like an old person but you know like board game night <laughs> how are you able to separate reality from those hallucinations I'm very lucky that the things that I hallucinate are not usually things that would be in regular day life the exception to that is I sometimes hallucinate spiders and the small spiders are the ones that I have difficulty with because we see, you know, we see little spiders in everyday life. So that's the only time I have a difficulty discerning whether or not it's a hallucination or not. However, if I'm, say, hallucinating a giant spider, uh, one comes into mind this, like, uh, large spider with, like, leathery skin, yellow body, black legs, and, like, when its its legs moved around, it's, it's no voice came out of its mouth, but like the creaking of the legs sounded like like children laughing. Uh, like that's see that's not something you'll see in everyday life. So do you see you that think, often? Spiders are some of the more common things I see. I really will not rest until anyone who has schizophrenia anywhere worldwide is not afraid to say the words, I have schizophrenia. What's something that's important for the world to understand about you? That I'm not a monster and that I'm more than a plot twist in a movie or that conversation people have after a mass shooting. Again, people who have schizophrenia are more likely to be the abuse victim rather than the abusers. The good guys get schizophrenia too, and the majority of them are good guys.